Warning, this video contains some actions that may not be safe. Please be cautious and we claim no responsibility for any injuries obtained from building this device. Hey guys, in this video we're going to cover soldering up the new micro ski skateboard. This one, as you can see, is very different than the old version, although soldering up is very similar. We're not going to go in depth on the specific differences, functions, capabilities of the boards and how they compare. That is for another video which is coming up soon. So for parts, you're going to need two sharpies, one red, one black. You're going to need four micro JST 1.25 connectors. One female low C, low C, and a ski sky board. You're also going to need a soldering iron and a hot glue gun if you want to make your connections nice and clean. You will also, of course, need a pair of safety glasses. So for the first step, we're going to be marking our micro JST 1.25s with our sharpies. If you're looking at your flight controller from the rear, you will see that the two micro JSTs closest to you are both facing towards the right and the others are facing towards the left. So if you look at your flight controller right next to your ESCs here, it should say S2, S1, and so on. And if you look really closely next to it, there is small plus and minuses. And on your female micro JST 1.25s here, if you're looking at your connector, where the open hole area faces away from you, you can tell that the side to your right is going to be negative and the side to your left is going to be positive. You can also just double check this by plugging in some males. So based off of that knowledge, we're now going to take our Sharpies and color in each side of our micro JST 1.25s here, similar to this one where on the right side I have black, and on the left side I have red. This is handy just so when you solder them you make sure you do them right because desoldering these is a huge pain. Trust me you really don't want to have to go through that. There we go just like that. Now that we have them labeled we can move on to soldering them up. Okay guys so now for this step we're going to be soldering up our micro ski sky. So I've just rested in our micro JST connectors here and as you can see if you face the flight controller from the back, the micro JSTs closest to the micro USB here will have their open slot facing that way and the ones further away will face this way. And what I've done is I've just rested them in there and I'm just going to start by soldering a motor. So I'm going to take out three of them. And once again, if you check over here, it should say S3 and if you take it out, one side should say positive and the other should be either unlabeled or it should say negative. I'm putting my side of the micro JST with the red on the positive side, just like that. Now I can flip my flight controller and then I can solder this up. For this, you're going to need a soldering iron with a semi fine tip. So, what you're going to do is add a small dab of solder to the tip of your soldering iron. It should be just a teeny little dot, and all you're going to do is simply tap that on to the connection with your micro JST. Before you do this, make sure that your soldering iron is very clean and that throughout the process you clean it regularly. If the bead doesn't seem to be sticking, you can also always just dab on a little bit of solder. Just like that. It should either form a nice rectangle or a small bead, and then you can do it on the other side. There we go, just like that. Now we can take the micro JST for the other side, and because it's on the other side, it should face the same direction, so the open hole should face the same direction. So you can pop that in, just like that. So as you can see, the holes are facing in the same direction. And I'm going to flip that over and solder it up. There we go, just like that. Now we can do the other two. So, 
popping in the third one. And because these ones are further down the flight controller, they're going to be facing the opposite direction. So if you can see, this one's facing, the hole's facing that way, this hole's going to be facing this way. Make sure to also double check on the flight controller board. You really don't want to get this wrong. And then finally, we're going to want to solder the last one. So there we go, it should go on just like that. There we go, just like that. Okay, now that we have soldered on all of our Micro GST 1.25s, it's important that we test our soldering connections and make sure that none of them are shorted. So I've set my multimeter here to an ohm setting. It doesn't really matter which one as long as it's not super duper sensitive. And I have the probes here and I'm just gonna touch each of my two solder connections and if the resistance drops to zero, then we know that there is a short and that we have to desolder that connection and resolder it. I'm pretty sure, just from visually inspecting everything here, that there is no short of connections, but you really just want to check. Yep, and it looks like all my connections are good. So now that we have all that done, we can move on to soldering up our LOSI connectors. Okay, so now it is time to solder on our LOSI connector here. What I've done is I've cut it and stripped the LOSI wire to the right length. It doesn't really matter what length, it's just whatever works best for you. So if you'll notice on your flight controller, there is a labeling, one that says VIN and one that says GND. VIN stands for voltage in and GND stands for ground. So the red is gonna go to the voltage in and the black is gonna go to the ground. So the red should just be able to pop in like that. Then on the rear, you want to bend the wire back. And then the black should go in there. And then you want to bend the wire back. Now double check that you have this done right because this board does not have polarity protection, which means if you solder this wrong, your board will fry and smoke. So now that you have that done and we are very sure that it is wired properly, we can flip over the board and make sure that none of these wires are touching anything super important. And then solder that up. then you can take a pair of wire snips and just trim that if you want to. It's not really necessary, but you don't want to flap it around because it could cause a short circuit. And for this, you don't really have to check it because there's not really an easy way for it to make a short circuit. Now that we got that soldered up, we can heat up our Epic 100 watt glue gun and add hot glue to the bottoms of all these connections because if you happen to be mounting this on a carbon fiber frame, the carbon fiber does conduct and you will get a short circuit if you do not put hot glue over that. Also, it just helps keep stuff intact and so wires don't fall off after repeated bending. Okay, now that our glue gun's hot here, what we're gonna do is flip over our flight controller and wherever there's soldering that we have done, put a small dab of hot glue. There we go. Now what you can do is take an anti-static bag or something and smash that down so it gets nice and flat. Don't worry, we're using an anti-static bag so we can peel it off again. Now wait for that to dry, but while we're waiting for that to dry, we can add a dab of hot glue where our LOSI wires leave here. Right there, and right there. And this will make sure that they don't bend too much and put too much stress on the solder joint. Make sure to really get in there. You can even fold the wires up. And it's okay if you cover any electronics on hot glue. Hot glue is a great insulator. Honestly, it's a great substance. Just don't put on too much because if you're building a quadricopter with this flight controller, it is most likely a very small one and every gram counts. Now after you're waiting a minute or so, we should be able to pull our flight controller off the anti-static. Be careful to slowly peel it so the hot glue doesn't come with it. 
you go. And when you're done, it should look something like that. Or you've just covered up each of the connection with a dab of hot glue. And then on the top, it should look something like that. And this will ensure that your flight controller is protected, safe, and functional. So thank you guys for watching. We hope that this video was helpful to you. And if you liked it, make sure to subscribe. And thank you to the viewer who suggested this. I think that this would be helpful for many other people. And if you have any other video ideas, make sure to leave them in the comments below. And thank you guys for watching. See you next time.